The second paper I, I would like to show uh, and uh, to, to share with you is uh, uh, the evolution of compliance with uh, positive airway therapy uh, after switching from CPA to SV. Again, uh, <coughs> you have the study flow. Uh, at baseline, we uh, look at quite the same sample, uh, starting with uh, PAP therapies, but not only CPA, but also ASV. And uh, actually, uh, 13,000 people were starting ASV uh, uh, in different conditions. Sometimes the first mode was, was, CPA, was CPAP and the second mode adaptive servoventilation and an overpopulation was using only adaptive servoventilation. Uh, I should say I like these figures. I think it's really informative. Again, it's not a small sample. You know that the existing studies in the field, we have uh, 40, 50 uh, people included. And you can see the, 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 the progressive decrease uh, day after day in the CPAP uh, adherence in these people with emergent uh, central sleep apnea. And when you shift to ISV, immediately you have a significant increase in the uh, device adherence. And uh, this is probably related to the abrupt normalization of respiratory events. You can see the mean value for residual events in these people with uh, uh, central sleep apnea under CPAP. And after shifting to adaptive servoventilation, there is a normalization. And again, this normalization seems to be associated or seems to be related uh, to uh, the switch uh, to another therapy more effective in terms of uh, suppression of uh, uh, respiratory events. So these data, I should say, are in line with the recent recommendation of the European Respiratory Society saying that in the situation of uh, persistent central sleep apnea with uh, an RHI above 15 uh, in uh, idiopathic central sleep apnea, or uh, in uh, uh, post-opioid central sleep apnea, or in different uh, associated comorbidities, stroke, renal failure, etc. Probably ASV is the appropriate therapy.